Now, let me assure you, there is a difference between a business and a practice. Achievers Group is not a business. Achievers Group is a practice. A practice is, if I don't work, I don't eat. Because in many ways, myself and Peter, we are actually the personalities intertwined in the business. You can't separate. Now, I struggled a long time with this. And I had to actually be very comfortable that it was going to be a practice. Examples of practices could be very famous plastic surgeons, doctors who people recommend this is the doctor you go to. So the business revolves around them. There is nothing wrong in having a practice. The key to running a practice is building your practice around your lifestyle. And clearly there is no exit strategy in a practice. And what you do is because no one's going to buy the business if the business is you. That's the challenge. So if I actually wanted to build a business, I have to actually build products around that business to give leverage. A business in a classical sense is a profitable commercial enterprise that works without the owner. Business owners are traditionally responsible for two things only, generating a return on their initial investments and generating a return on their ongoing investments. So the business owner should be spending your time on two things only, investing in surplus funds, in other ventures, expanding the business, or ensuring that the management team is maintaining the overall strategic direction of the business. Um, there is an amazing book which many of you have read called E-Myth Revisited. Extraordinary book by um, a gentleman um, called Michael Gerber. And it was a legendary book for its time because it, it articulated what many of us knew, that inside each business owner there is a struggle between the technician, the manager and the entrepreneur. And what happens is we have the entrepreneurial strike, which is the vision of the business, but what happens is the technician takes control and the technician is we do it, do it, do it. Because we feel that running a successful business means that you have to be good at doing it, doing the technical work. So a good plumber will actually say, I will be a good plumbing business. But because they're so good at doing the plumbing, they do what they're comfortable doing, the operational side of the business. So they can't grow the business because they are the business. So the key is understanding that the technician exists but sometimes you have to replace the technician that is you to grow the business. Because in many ways, the business owner needs to take on a much more entrepreneurial role moving forwards. And then there's the manager. The manager seeks order. The manager demands systems. And the entrepreneur demands vision, growth, excitement, daring. The manager loves order and the technician loves detail. And in large organisations, you tend to have different people doing those roles. For example, the technician would be the engineering department. The manager would be the chief financial officer, the chief operating officer. And the entrepreneur will usually be the managing director or a marketing and sales director. And they actually don't always get along together, but they need each other. In a business owner, you've got all of those frees making you crazy. There's where the conflict is. The key to actually building the engine is you've got to get leverage. Leverage is working less and achieving more. You will actually get leverage on page 51 um, through... Um, Basically, five kinds of leverage. Other people's money, great. Other people's experience. I can't underestimate the value of investing in yourself. If you want to get somewhere really quickly, somebody's already written a book about how to do it. And, and read those books of people who have done it, because there is a difference between a teacher and a master. And a lot of teachers out there, which are really tremendous, but check their experience before you invest in their knowledge. 
um, because sometimes, you know, they don't tell you, you know, it's, it all sounds great in theory, but let's, the, the practical realities of the business are not as easy as we would, some people would make out. Other people's ideas, pay for those ideas. Uh, many of the ideas that create great businesses are people who look at things from a different perspective. And other people's time and other people's work. Now, I want to explain to you that one of the most amazing fundamental changes that has occurred in the last 40 years in business has been that over 60% of businesses in America at the moment are turning towards a turnkey solution. And a turnkey solution, quite simply is, is a franchise. Now, I'm not suggesting in any way you franchise your business, but I am suggesting that you build it like as if you were going to franchise it. Because the franchise is the system that upgrades the engine from a 1300cc Volkswagen to a turbocharged Porsche beast. And this, the staggering thing is that, I, and I'll speak from understanding, um, because the, the most successful franchise, and there have been many franchises, but franchising usually came out of brand franchising initially in the car industry in America. So if you wanted to sell Chrysler cars, you would actually have a brand franchise. What I'm talking about here is a systems brand franchise. Gloria Jeans is that sort of franchise. McDonald's is that sort of franchise. And this is the most amazing thing. I, nine years ago, um, when I did some research on this, uh, most people who were very smart, savvy business investors were waiting to buy a McDonald's franchise. They were queuing up. 900,000 bucks. They could buy other franchises, substantially lower than that, in the fast food industry, even they gave them a better return on capital employed. But everybody wanted a McDonald's franchise, and fundamentally this is the reason why, is that when you actually sold, when you bought your franchise from McDonald's, after spending one year working in your business, the agreement between the franchisor and the franchisee said this, you only have to work one day a year in your business to keep it. Because McDonald's was not selling you a restaurant, it was actually selling you a system that was so simple that a 16-year-old could run it. The key to business is you make the complex things really simple. Our innate nature is that sometimes we try to control things by making them complex. The complexity, you bring it to a simplicity level. Now, I am staggered because um, if you are aware, because my, um, my daughter has recently turned um, 14 and a half years, and she is now working, not at McDonald's, but at Baker's Delight. And I'm staggered that she can't clean up her room, but she takes great pride in cleaning up a Baker's Delight franchise. And you say, well, she must get paid a lot of money. She doesn't. You know, it's $7.10 an hour or something. It's nothing particularly major. And, you know, and she works on a Sunday occasionally because they said only the best staff work on Sunday. <laughs> I go, wow. Okay, okay. Because that's what she was told. And, and what was I to bubble her? I wasn't going to tell her, no, that's not really correct. They're just selling you an attractive proposition because no one else wants to work on a Sunday. I wasn't going to do that to my daughter. I said, yeah, they've got it right, because Sunday's God's day, and, you know, you're close. You know, that's why they do. It's the day of, that's the day, okay? So that's cool, okay? 